Hello and welcome back to everyone. This is the second part of Red Wine Quality Prediction Project. In the last video, you have seen the data set that I am going to use. This is Red Wine Quality data set. It has a CSV file attached to it. We'll be using this data set for this project. I am creating this project on Kaggle Community Notebook. I am going to name this as Red Wine Quality. Okay, so that will be our notebook. I'll supply the link to this notebook in the description box once it's created so you can see the code however i'll say that you watch the uh, the whole video by yourself and try to create this project on your own if you are stuck at any point you can always go and check my code okay so i'm not going to use any accelerator like the previous videos for now let us start with this project so in this particular cell i am importing numpy and pandas we are going to import the libraries as we use because there is no need to import a lot of libraries before you might get confused with it okay so the draft session is starting let me just wait for it to start once you can see i have a cpu ram and disk storage available for free on kaggle so it is executed now and the cell session is started cpu utilization you might see it is 100% right now but it will reduce as we go on so let us import uh, two more libraries that are matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. I'm naming it as plt. Okay. Let us again import another library called as cbond. I'm importing it as sns. Okay. Okay, so this is, I think, a markup. I have to get a code cell here. And let us execute it. So on Kaggle, you can see we have a code cell and a markdown cell. On markdown cells, you can write some text that is not going to be executed. In code cells, you are going to write these kind of statements. Okay. Nextly, what we are going to do is we are going to load the data set. For working on any data, we first have to load the data set. So I'll say that the variable name for a data set will be df. It is quite convention. You might have guessed already. Using pandas, I'll use a read CSV function, read underscore CSV, and I'll supply the path to it, right? So on right here, you can see copy file path option available on this data set. I'll copy the path right from here. From the input section, you can see this CSV file and it has a copy file option. So I'll copy the path from here and I'll paste it over here. So the data set will be loaded in this manner. Let me show you the data, how it is presented. So head function of the data frame will allow you to print the first five rows of the data set. Okay. Head function will print the first five rows of the data set. If you have supply some parameter over here, like one or two, it will uh, print the that number of rows. But by default, it will print first five rows. Okay. So that is, we are getting the first five rows. We have all the variables over here. You can see like the last video, like the last project that we created, you can see there are a lot of uh, column names that have spaces between them, right? So we don't want those spaces. So we'll try to eliminate those. But before that, let me just uh, say that how many, uh, let us analyze this quality column, right? So first of all, let us analyze this quality column. I'll go in deep after that. I'll say df of quality. How to analyze any column? You might have already guessed. Like I told you in the previous projects also, value counts function. So value counts function is used to analyze the values of any particular column. So you can see there are quality 3, 8, 4, 7, 6 and 5. So the quality is ranging between 0 and 10, but we don't have any quality for 0, 1, 2 and 10 or 9 like that. We have quality major for 3, 8, 4, 7, 6 and 5. So that are the six uh, values that we are going to use. However, you can see there are a lot of values for 5 and 6 over here. Almost 80, 90% of the values belong to 5 or 6. Rest of the values are either above 6 or below 6. So we have to analyze the quality according to that also. 
so we are going to uh, allocate good and bad quality towards a certain range of values okay if we are going to use this kind of 5 6 7 value then it is of no use to us the model cannot predict a large range of values we will try to uh, use binary classification where either the quality would be good or it will be bad okay we are going to analyze that after some time before proceeding forward i'll just eliminate all the spaces from the column names how to do this i already told you in the last video we'll write df dot columns because we are working on columns we'll say change the columns change the columns with string and replace it replace the space with an underscore right so what it will do it will take the columns take the string out of it replace all the spaces with an underscore right so this function will replace all the spaces present in the column names with an underscore let us try to execute it it is executed now if we see df dot head with just one row we can see all the spaces are eliminated you can see the underscores over here right so this is how we'll eliminate the spaces first let us move forward let us try to analyze whether there are any value unavailable in the data set so how to do this df dot columns again we are working with columns so i'll say inside the column if there are any any values so df dot is any function that you already used in the previous projects also df dot is any function and we'll say if there is any any value if there is any value that is not available or is na that is not available then give it to us it is not giving us any value so we can say that there are no values that are unavailable we have all the available values in our data set it is quite clean data set that we are using however if you are having a data set that is not very clean you can always clean it using cleaning methods you can either drop all the any values with rows or you can apply mean and max function over there okay so now that we have done the data analyzation we can start with data plotting so i'll say i'm doing some plotting i'm using this markdown cell for plotting okay i'll mark this in bold also. starting the plotting we can say uh, i want to analyze that how many of these parameters how many of these variables that we have as dependent independent variables are relating to the quality that is the last attribute okay so let me just analyze if somehow citric acid is related to quality how i will do it i'll just create a bar plot i'll say sns dot bar plot remember that sns is c bond that i imported above and i'm creating a bar plot using it where the x value will be quality right so x value will be quality while the y value will be the citric acid i'll just copy the citric acid from here so that i write the same name if you don't write the same name it will give you an error so remember that and the data that we are going to use is our df right so this will create the bar plot for citric acid versus quality let us see okay now you can see over here there is a clear understanding that increase in the citric acid concentration will increase the quality you can see a line of variation going directly above that a mean citric acid will increase the quality so we can say that yeah citric acid is somehow related to quality increase in citric acid will result in increase in quality so i'll create another bar plot this time analyzing some other variable let us analyze presence of chlorides right so is the presence of chlorides affecting the quality let us see let me just copy this chlorides from here and i'll say yeah so let us see if chlorides are related to quality 
again you can see a decreasing line a continuous decreasing line so increase in chlorides will decrease the quality chlorides will be indirectly proportional to quality a lower chloride concentration will result in higher quality okay so chlorides have to be minimum this way you can analyze any of these uh, parameters i'll analyze a few more parameters for you let us analyze residual sugar i'll say residual sugar let me just copy whole of this as well and in place of chlorides we'll say residual sugar okay so we are analyzing if residual sugar is somehow related to quality uh here you cannot see a perfect graph that you can analyze if residual sugar increase or decrease in residual sugar will increase or decrease the quality so i don't think that will uh, hamper the relationship between these two there must be a relationship between these two but bar plot is not able to analyze it you can see a lot of variation in 3 and 8 range while there are lesser variation in residual sugar over 5 and 6 quality remember that 5 and 6 have the largest number of uh, values in our data set still there is so less variation in residual sugar right lastly i want to create a line plot for let us say that i know that acidity is somehow related to citric acid so let us see if these are related in this data set also to conclude that the yeah, other set data set is quite good so i know that these two are related so i'll say sns dot line plot this time i'm plotting a line plot on the x axis i want citric acid okay on the x axis i want the citric acid so i'll say i'll copy it from right here i'll say citric acid is it somehow related to fixed acidity on y i have fixed acidity right here this is the thing that we are going to do to check whether our data set is doing right or not because i know citric acid and fixed acidity are related to each other let us see if they are related in this data set also yes i have got a quite nice graph over here you can see increase in citric acid is continuously increasing the acidity so citric acid is present in all the uh, sour fruits you can also uh, find it over internet that citric acid is found mostly in sour fruits so increase in citric acid concentration will also increase the acidity right so we can conclude that our data set is quite useful to us it's presenting a quite nice view for uh, these two parameters now we can proceed with our creation of the model before creation of the model like i told you in the last video we don't want to deal with quality in numbers we don't want to deal with quality 1 2 or 10 right we are going to deal with either it is a good quality or a bad quality so for that we have to change this column of called as quality to our values so we'll define a function for that externally i'll say def quality update okay i'll call this function quality update and i'll take a data frame to it okay i think this is a markdown cell so in the code cell i'll say quality update right so this will be the quality update function what i will do is i will say let us extract the row value first so i'll say in val i will extract the row value of okay, let me do this in a loop because we have to extract all the row values so i have to do this inside a loop so for loop i am going to use for i this i will denote the row number and the row function the row variable that i am going to use will denote the whole row of row this i will denote a particular row column and this row will denote the complete row right so i am going to use two variables in this loop i and row and i am going to say this that inside df dot iter rows if you don't know how iter rows work you can see our video on working with python you can see if we have a data frame that is type of a dictionary the iter rows function will work like following one by one each row let us me show you inside the data set 
so iter row function will do that it will return two values first will be a particular column and next will be a complete row so this iter row function will return two values like this so we can uh, traverse throughout the uh, data set using iter rows function okay so for i and row and df dot iter rows i'll say i have to extract a row value we have to use a variable for that let us call it val and inside a row i will say I have to get the column called as quality. For this quality column, I will say that if the value for this column, this particular value, okay, is less than or equal to six. Remember, in the data set that you saw, a quality less than six point five is not a good quality. So I will say value less than equal to six because six point five is not present in our data set. So, if the value is less than or equal to six, I'll say df dot at. I will denote the row, and we have to get the column, and the value updated will be zero. So, for values of the quality less than or equal to six, we are saying that it is bad quality. It is not up to the mark. Nextly, for else, I will say df dot at. Similarly, i comma quality. This time the value will be one. So if the value of the quality is less than six, we'll denote it as zero or bad. If the quality is greater than six, then we are denoting it as one or good. Okay. So our function is complete. I will call this function using our data frame, and it will update automatically. So I will execute this cell. It is executed. Now, just to show you, I will create the head file with probably three values. Remember that in the data set we had a lot of values. Like in the, here, you can say five, 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 six, like these. Now, in the data set in the quality column, you can see we have values either zero or one. Okay, that is how. Our function is working. Now let's split our data into training and testing for creating our model. Okay, let me mark this down. Train test split. Right. So this will be our new creation. We have to import tra train test split from SQLearn dot model selection that we did before also from SQLearn. Not model selection. You already know. Import train test split. Right. Importing train test split. Let me execute this cell. Nextly, we are going to create x and y values for this data set. You might have already guessed that in the R case, the x values are going to be everything other than quality. So inside this. Inside parentheses, you have to specify a list of columns that you have to drop. So we'll drop quality, and we have to specify the axis. Axis will be vertical, so it will drop the column in our x data set. In the y, there will be nothing but just the quality column. So we'll say df of quality. This will create our x and y variables. Nextly, we are going to split this into training and testing. So you already know that train test split returns the four variables that will be x training part, x testing part, y training part, and y testing part. The train test size would be 0.2 in my case. You can say that test size is always less than training size. So it can be 10%, 20%, or 30% at max. I'll put it as 20%. I'll call the function. It has to be supplied two values first, x and y, then test size. Test underscore size will be 0.2, that is 20%, and we have to supply a random state. I'll supply the random state as 42 right now. So we have our four values: x train, x test, y train, and y test. We can move forward, creating our model. Before creating, we can see in the data set. Right here, 
that the fixed acidity value is in decimal volatile acidity is very low decimal right citric acid is almost zero in all the values chlorides are very near to zero while you can see alcohol quantity is almost 10 while pH is below 6 most of the time density is close to 1 all these values are not related to each other our model if we just want to create the model using these x and y values might result in favorable towards any one value our model might favor one value over another so we have to scale all those value into one scale we use standard scalar for that purpose remember if we don't use standard scalar if we don't scale the values our model will not predict accurately our requirements okay so we have to use standard scalar so from scale on dot pre-processing that pre-processing will import standard scalar okay so this is how we do it from scale learn dot pre-processing maybe that is uh, some okay so i'll say from dot it is dot it will not be dot it will be a space and we'll export it there's no problem when you are dealing in kaggle if you face any problem it won't result in uh, stopping of your whole program you can execute another cell right after this okay so i forgot a space over here that was creating a problem from scale under pre-processing we are importing standard scale we'll try to scale the values now we have to create a variable for a standard scale. Let us say it is SC standard scale. Next, we want to scale the train and test values. So X train will be equal to SC dot fit underscore transform. You know that fit underscore transform will transform the values to a single scale and will supply the value as X train. Similarly, for X test, we want to write for testing values. So, by this, we can scale all the values. Let us execute it. Right. It is executed. So, we have X train and X test ready to be executed. Now, we'll create our support vector machine model. We'll start with support vector machine. So in support vector machine, we'll try to give some parameters on our own and then we'll use grid search CV for best parameters. Okay. So for that, let us create the support vector machine model first. We have to import this support vector machine before anything else. So from SK learn, let me just small from SK learn dot SVM. So the parent module is called as SVM in case of support vector machine. Okay. We have to import a module called as SVC. Okay. <coughs> it is the support vector classifier. Inside the support vector machine module, we have support vector classifier. We have to import that. Okay. We have imported it. Nextly, what we have to do is we have to create the model. So let us say that the name of the model will be regressor. Okay, we are not uh, performing any other thing but regression. So we'll say that the model will be regressor. We have to initialize support vector machine using SVC. We, remember, we are not supplying any parameter over here, but using grid search CV, we can uh, classify the best parameters for support vector machine. We'll do it in the coming section. First of all, let us ex execute it. <coughs> Let us try to fit our data. So I'll say reg dot fit and I'll supply X train and Y train to it. I'm sure it will do it quite quickly. Yeah, so it is done. Nextly, we want to predict whether we are getting a quite 
good score or not okay so i'll say that y predicted will be res dot predict x test right so in this way will predict the values of quality for x test this predict function is used to uh, take the values that are given to it and predict the values for the output values for those input values okay so this is how we do it so we have the predicted values that will be a list of values in yp we'll compare it with our y test this remember that this yp variable has to be as similar as possible to the y test because this x test is predicted using the model towards yp okay so now how do we check whether this yp is as similar as y test or not we'll use something called as confusion matrix okay so remember that in the starting of the video i told you that we are going to predict this values using our model in our case in this project that is how we'll do it okay before anything else let me just show you the score of this model so i'll say reg dot score x test and y test okay so you know that what kind of accuracy we are getting it so we are getting 87.5 percent of accuracy you can see over here using our svc without any hyperparameters we haven't used any hyperparameters yet still we are getting 87.5 percent accuracy okay now we have our values predicted in yp we'll use confusion matrix to track whether this yp is as similar to y test or not okay so let us import the confusion matrix i will say sk learn dot metrics so it is a part of a library called as metrics okay there's a ma metrics module we'll import confusion matrix from it confusion matrix is one of the most ideal methods to know whether or not your model is performing good or not okay this confusion matrix is kind of a 2d matrix where the diagonal elements will have to be at most okay and you know that whenever you have the diagonal elements as highest values and all the other elements as lower values then your model is doing good okay so let me just import this confusion matrix we have this confusion matrix with ourselves what we'll do is we create the confusion matrix so for example i'll say c equals confusion matrix i'll initialize it using anything else and i'll say that create a matrix for y test and yp okay so we have y test and yp in the confusion matrix if you want to see what is inside a confusion matrix i'll show you so you can see the diagonal elements are 268 and 12 while the other two are 5 and 35 overall if you see diagonal elements are far beyond the other elements okay if you want to visualize it in a better way then you can use something called as heat map so i'll plot the heat map using cbond sns dot heat map and i'll just supply a matrix inside it so we have already our confusion matrix and we'll supply it inside this the lighter the better so heat map is always presented as the lighter the column the better it is so we can say that 0 and 0 this column is lighter so it is very better and these columns the non diagonal elements have to be as dark as possible okay that is only the requirement for heat map to work in a nice way so you can see for 1 and 1 it is not quite light but still that is because we don't have a large number of values in our data set for good mine quality remember both 5 uh, and 6 had the most number of values but 5 and 6 both have a both are denoting the same thing that is low quality so we are not having much values for higher quality that is why it is happening like this okay still we have our grid search cv method to increase this uh, method okay let us import grid search cv and try to improve the accuracy from now i will again use this sklearn remember this sklearn has to be used everywhere because it is the basic library for machine learning in python so inside model selection i'll again have 
grid search tree. So I have to import grid search CV. That is how I will import it. I have again typed it inside a markdown cell. Okay. So we have our grid search CV with ourselves. Let us initialize our model using parameters. So I'll say model equals grid search CV. We are using a hyperparameter tuning over here. I'll supply a model of SVM. The name was REG as you can see over here. So REG is supplied. Then what we have to supply? We have to supply a set that I will show you later. What we are concerned with most is has to be supplied inside accuracy. Okay, we are most concerned with accuracy. Okay, so scoring parameter has to be accuracy. What we are most concerned with. And the number of times I am going to execute it is probably 10. Okay, so I'll say it 10 times you can execute all of this. 10 times you can run your model on various parameters so as to get the mean of all those so that we can get the perfect value for our model. So SVM has three values that I already told you in the last projects also. First is C that can have values ranging from 0.1 to maybe 10 or 20. But for this I will take just 0 0.1, 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 maybe and 1.0 and maybe 1.4, 1.3. Okay, that is it. Uh, I'll take these five values for C. Another parameter is gamma, which will also take these kind of values. So I'll say that, yeah, I want to take all of these values only. I want to take 0 0.1, 0 0.4, uh, maybe 0 0.8, 1.0, 1.3, that is it. Yeah, I'll take these values for gamma also. And lastly is kernel. Kernel can be either linear or RBF. So I'll say try on RBF. And let's try on linear as well. However, I think that for this particular model, RBF will work better than linear. Okay, so let us say that, yeah, I have model. It is executed. So the model is executed, I think. Okay. Let us try to fit our data inside it without wasting. Model dot fit. I'll say x train dash y train. That will do it. It might take some time for you because we are not running a GPU over here. Because GPU running will decrease the number of cores. Okay. However, as we were using a lot of parameters over here. C values were 5 in number, gamma values were 5 in number and we are running all those value 10 times to get the mean. Okay, so this might take some time. However, it is executed quite quickly. Next, what we want to do is we want to extract the best parameters out of it. So that will be used using an object property called as best params. This best underscore params underscore is not a function. It is a property of an object. Okay. So it will give us the best parameters. The C is 1.3, gamma is 1.0 and kernel is RBF. So this is the parameter that we have provided for SVM. Let us try to create an SVM using these parameters. So what we'll do is we'll say mod equals SVC. This time we'll initialize the values using these values. 1.3 is C, the gamma value is probably one and we have kernel as rbf right so we have all the three values with us we have our model ready i'm executing it it is executed let us try to fit again i will just uh, copy it from right here yeah, so that we don't waste any time we have mod. Okay, so our model is trained. Let us predict the score now. Mod dot uh, score will give us the score for x test 
and y test okay so let us try to get the score and this time we are getting 89 percent yeah so that is what i was talking about remember before using the normal svm we were getting 87.5 percent accuracy but after using the best parameters we are getting 89.6 okay so that is how we increase the accuracy using grid search cv that is hyper parameter tuning okay so with the best parameters in this svm we are getting 89 percent all almost you can say 90 percent accuracy but what if i want to go higher if i say i use a random forest algorithm because it is also a classifier and it works quite nice in this kind of data set i want to say that i have to use this random forest classifier also after svm although we are getting a nice accuracy with svm almost 90 percent still i want to say that uh, yeah let us try for random forest also from sklearn dot ensemble so random forest is one of the ensemble techniques okay so it is present inside the ensemble modules i have to import random forest classifier okay so this is a random forest classifier that i have to import i'll say execute next we have to create the model for that we have to create a name for the model so i'll just copy it In random forest classifier, we have to specify how many decision trees we are going to create. That is specified using n estimators. So we have n estimators and equals to 200. Suppose I want to create 200 decision trees and I want to get the forest done. Remember that I am just using this random forest classifier. I am not telling you how this works. If you want to know the mathematical implementation of all these algorithms, whether SVM, random forest or logistic regression that we used before, you can comment down or let me know using my email so that we'll try to create uh, all those videos if you want. Okay, try to uh, tell you the mathematical implementation of how these algorithms are going to work. But for now, creating the project, I am using this random forest classifier for uh, creating a model for our data set. Let us try to train it. So I'll say rfc.fit and I'll supply train and test values. X train and Y train values first. Let's try. Okay, so there's a spelling mistake over here. It is quite uh, nicely done. Next, what we want to do is we want to predict the score. So rfc.score. Let us see what is the accuracy that we are getting. So we are getting 88% accuracy over here. In the SVM with best parameters, we were getting 89%. It was quite better. But we are getting 88% using uh, SVM also. Uh, sorry, random forest classifier also. If you want, you can use cross validation inside random forest to increase the accuracy. Okay, so let me just show you quickly how to do that. Because I haven't used cross validation in the last project as well. But if you are using random forest, you might always want to use the cross validation for a random forest classifier. Okay, so I'll again say model selection. I will import cross val score. Okay, so this is a library that I want to use is cross val score. What I will do is I will create another model. I'll say RFC2 equals cross val score of. Now I have to specify the model that I've used using estimator. The estimator is the model that we used. It is called RFC as before. Next, what we want to supply is X and Y values. So X value is X train while the Y value is Y train. Remember that X value is supplied under X that is capital and Y value is supplied under Y which is a small. Okay, so there's capital X and small Y. Okay, so don't get confused in this. And I have to validate it 10 times. So CV is 10. Once you have done it, you try to execute it. It will take some time because again, we have 10 uh, parameters that are going to be executed 10 times. It is done. Now what we can do is try to get the mean. 
what is the mean of all those 10 evaluations and I hope that it is quite uh, larger this time so RFC 2 it is yeah so you are getting 91.2 accuracy so random forest actually gives you above 90 percent in this data however if you were taking this one time just just one time you were creating random forest you were getting 88 percent using cross val score you can estimate the right accuracy using random forest classifier which is 91.2 percent this 91.2 is i think the best till now so that is what uh, we have using random forest classifier now comes the part that all of us were waiting for prediction right so i talked about how to predict those values how to use prediction in our model and i haven't done it yet but i will tell you how to predict the values okay so for predicting i already told you that we have to use a function called as predict okay so if we give some values to our model it will give us whether or not the quality is good or not okay so let me just say that i want to see all the values that we have to provide df dot head one so we have all of these values that we have to provide inside predict we have to create an array of values okay whenever we have to predict some value we have to create an array of all these values that have to be supplied as input so i'll say that i'll call this array as a this array has to be a two dimensional array How, why two dimensional array because our model is expecting a column it is not expecting a row so if i create an array like this it will create a row but i don't want a row inside the model okay the model will require a column so how we'll do it we'll create a row and inside a row we'll create a column okay so you have to use this double notation double square bracket notation to create a column so inside this double uh, square bracket notation i'll supply all of these values let us say that fixed acidity is something around six okay i'm saying that six volatile acidity is has to be lower so i'll say 0.3 right and the citric acid concentration is 0.1 i'll say that in our wine the citric acid concentration is 0.1 the residual sugar is quite higher 2.4 i'll say that chlorides are quite low 0.002 the chloride content is very low then i have free sulfur dioxide the value for sulfur dioxide i'll say that 10.0 okay nextly total sulfur dioxide i'll say 33 okay nextly we have density density is almost 0.99 for everything so i'll put it like that only ph let us increase the ph by little bit 4.5 ph okay next we have sulfates and alcohol so sulfates are something around 0.55 and alcohol maybe 12 percent right so 12 percent i'll say alcohol all of these values are input values you can see i have taken all the input variables i have not specified quality these are values okay i'll say that model has to predict what model should i use should i use random forest or should i use this uh, svm model for now let us use this mod that is svm with best parameters okay i'll say mod dot predict so mod dot predict will give me some value based on these values so i'll say a okay let us try to execute it first it is giving array of zero what this array of zero means is that quality predicted is bad if this was array of one then the quality would have been good okay so it is saying that this quality is not very good i have used uh, most of these values comparable to the first value and you can see that uh, the quality predicted was zero you can play around with these values okay to check whether your model is working good or not while it was giving an accuracy of 89 or 90 percent so i think that it is working very good but you can play with these values to predict that whether your model is yeah working good or not okay so that is how we'll predict the values in the coming project i will also show you how to create a ui for this in this project you have learned how to take values from the user and use it inside your model to predict whether a quality is good or not 
so whenever if you see something around the internet i'm not saying that you purchase a wine bottle but if you something around uh, internet you see something you can always put around the values that are acidity and citric acid and all of these values inside your model and see that if that wine is good quality or not right so you can use this model in that way this is quite useful in daily life also using this mod dot predict or any model dot predict you can also predict the values that we created in the previous two projects so as an assignment now that you know how to do it i'll say that go on watch those videos again and create those projects and try to predict the values for your own values okay for your own input input values you have to predict those output values you can play around with that so that is it for this project red wine quality i have created this whole notebook i'll share you the code the data set and everything inside the description box you can see it over there that is it for this video i hope you learned something good from this meet you in the next video with another interesting project till then bye bye